It's episode 72 of the Keto for Women show. You're listening to the Keto for Women show, and I'm your host and nutritionist, Sean Miner. This show is designed to empower women to find their own expression of the keto diet to maximize their health and happiness. Now let's get started with today's episode. Hey, hey, friends, welcome back. Thanks, as always, for joining me on this edition of the Keto for Women show. We're finally rounding things out, talking about the 10 things that I do to stay healthy now. So we're going to do numbers 6 through 10 today. We did 1 through 5 in the last episode, and then the episode before that was all about my full detailed health story and why I now do these 10 things to make sure that I never, ever go back to where I was and what I've been through health-wise over the past five years. So if you haven't listened to those episodes, go back and do that at some point. You don't have to do it right now. It'll still make sense if you listen to this one first. No big deal. Before we get into numbers six through 10 of what I do to stay healthy, let's chat about some updates. First of all, as I mentioned in the past few episodes, our newest Keto for Women sponsor, The Fat Fuel Company. They are doing some amazing things with the idea of a fat-fueled coffee or a fat-fueled hot cocoa, which means loaded with good healthy fats, on the go. So they have taken every single thing that you need to have this awesome, frothy, fatty drink and put it into one tiny little packet that you can take with you when you travel or to work or just have in your purse or just have it at home when you don't feel like doing all this stuff, which happens to me quite often. So like I said, they have both an organic coffee and organic hot cocoa. Both are amazing. They have grass-fed butter powder, coconut and MCT oil powder, Himalayan salt, and then either organic coffee or cacao. So really, really awesome things. Just so nice to have if you want to make a fatty beverage when you are obviously traveling. So nice because I know a lot of you have a hard time finding good healthy fats while you travel or also when you are just like going to work and you want a mid-morning snack or maybe a late afternoon snack. It's a very good, convenient thing to have around these fat fuel coffees and cocos. So you can go ahead and try them for yourself. They're delicious. You're going to love them. You head to fatfuelcompany.com. Learn more about them there. Then when you're ready to purchase, it will take you over to Amazon. You can use the coupon code keto, the number four women, and you get 20% off your order through that Amazon account. So make sure you go ahead and do that. It's fatfuelcompany.com and the coupon code is keto, the number four women. As far as things around here, well, we just wrapped up the September class of the Fat Burning Female Project. Really, really awesome class. Of course, I know I always say that, but they really are always awesome. I just love connecting with the ladies and getting to know everyone. And I did also just start a new class. So if you have been listening to the show for a while, you now probably have a sense of what my business is like. So basically how I now help women is through the Fat Burning Female Project being the very first step. So you go through my six-week online group class, you get yourself into a nice healthy state of ketosis in the safe and effective approach that I have created and now helped over a thousand women get through. And then you feel really good and amazing. And you have this intuitive keto lifestyle. You're not counting macros or percentages or using a tracker of any sort anymore. And it's really great. And you're also starting to think more about stress levels and and things like that and how it could be affecting you. So from there, what has happened over the now two years that I've been running this course is I noticed that when women went through the Fat Burning Female Project, they often came out at the end of the six weeks realizing that they had a lot more going on in their bodies than they thought, because that's one of the things that we teach in the Fat Burning Female Project is like really learning about your body and your health and what it's telling you and all these symptoms that you're having. What does that all mean? And so that really gets women wanting to learn more. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, and we'll talk about this later on in the show, is through functional medicine. So doing some 
functional lab testing to see where your hormones are at, what your gut is doing, what food sensitivities you have. And now I'm moving on and doing some blood sugar testing too. So that's kind of how these what I am now calling continuing education classes started within my business as well. So you start with the Fat Burning Female Project. It's the flagship course. And then from there, some women decide that they still have more that they want to learn about their bodies. And that's when you go to the Happy Hormones Project, the Good Gut Project, or now the Better Blood Sugar Project. So I just created that. And it's a really simple class. It's going to be really fun. We just test the fasting insulin, fasting glucose, fructosamine, and HbA1c of each participant. And then we're going to have kind of a group discussion about it, go over some things that you can do kind of naturally to heal if you need to heal that blood sugar, what the functional lab ranges are, and that kind of thing. So just I'm telling you this because if you are someone that has already been through the Fat Burning Female Project, you may still be able to get a spot in the Better Blood Sugar Project. And if you haven't gone through Fat Burning Female, then something to keep in mind when the next class comes about in January, that it is kind of the start of a really awesome healing journey. I mean, you can just do Fat Burning Female, but for a lot of women, it really turns into a lot more where they're learning so much more about themselves, not just keto. So just keep that in mind. And like I mentioned, I'm taking November and December off from the Fat Burning Female Project. It's getting a facelift. So that's really exciting. And it will be back in January, right when we're all ready to really, you know, tackle our health. I think that always happens in January, which is great. Makes sense. I understand. 2019, here we come. But we'll be back to running that class in January and you can join then. And if you don't want to do it as a group, the self-study is always around. It's always available. You can go ahead and get that anytime over at my website. And that's really the DIY version of the Fat Burning Female Project. And what I would say about it right now is I think that honestly right now is one of the best times to do it. And I kind of kick myself a little bit for not running the Fat Burning Female Project in November, because I know last November, it was really, really powerful to go through and be in ketosis and get rid of your sugar cravings and have this whole different sense around food and being intuitive around food and doing that right before the holidays. So I think you know, that was a really awesome thing to do for the class. And I'm kind of sad I'm not doing it this year, but it needs a facelift. I have to do it at some point. So that is, would be something that if you do have any trepidation about going into the holiday season and, you know, getting off track, or you don't feel like you've gotten your ketone readings under control, or you're not quite sure what you're doing with keto, or you want to be more intuitive with it and, and get rid of those sugar cravings and all that stuff. I would say now is a really good time to dive into the self-study at least and get your head around that before we start heading into the holidays. So that's that. That is all the updates that I will share with you today, although I really think that there was something important that I was going to say, and then I'm now forgetting to say. Maybe it'll come up and I'll share it at the end if I can remember what it was. If not, it'll wait till next week. It can't be that important, I guess. But this is why I should take notes, and I did not. Okay, let's move on to the now number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 of the top 10 things I do to stay healthy. And actually, I shouldn't say top 10 because these aren't in any order. It's not like one is more important than the other. It's all 10 all the time. So let's make that very clear, especially as I go and start with number six here, which is stress management, relief, and self-care. That is so, so, so important that it's like when I was looking at this, it was like, why is this number six? And then I realized, I mean, they're all equally important. So just because stress management is down here, and I know I mentioned stress management a lot last week too, because it is so highly involved in literally every single morsel of what I'm doing to stay healthy. Like, I feel like the things that I'm doing to stay healthy, they kind of have this purpose. The big purpose, I think, mainly is to keep my stress levels down. So everything I do is to keep my body not stressed. And so, of course, this is like this big, huge umbrella where everything under that is stress management. But then there's also specific stress management things that I do in addition to all of this kind of being under that big umbrella, if that makes sense. So the first thing to say is that the reason why I am so, so, so focused on stress, and you guys know I talk about stress all the 
time on the Keto for Women show. That is the reason why I have the Fat Burning Female Project, because I do not want the transition into ketosis to be stressful on your body. And it is, but there's a way around it. And that's why I created the class. But I just know how often I have seen through my one-on-one practice when I had that going on through the Fat Burning Female Project, just talking to friends and family, all the things that I see and how crazy out of control. First of all, our stress levels are in this world, but also how much it can totally just crush your health. And you will have no idea that that's what's happening. And it did so to me as I went through in my story. I mean, I was really putting a ton of stress on my body, going through all these diet changes and significantly lowering my body fat percentage. And I lost my period because of it, which that is a sign of stress. And just then being super, super sick and having autoimmune disease and then being in a toxic mold situation, everything I did just put so much stress on my body that then when it finally came around to testing my stress levels through a salivary hormone panel, my cortisol was in the tank. Like I just didn't have any all day long. I didn't even wake up with any, which normally we wake up with quite a bit. And that's kind of how we get out of bed and and have some energy, but I had none because I was so tapped out. And that's what I see in a lot of women who go through my class, the happy hormones class. They're in the same boat where they've had such chronic stress for so long that they're not only is their cortisol just tanked and their adrenals are really struggling to keep up, but also their hormones are out of balance because of that. And so when we talk about it here on the podcast so much, it's mainly because first of all, it will make you not just having lowered cortisol or heightened cortisol, but at this point, a lot of us are more chronic and have lowered cortisol readings. Just having that is going to make you feel pretty crappy. And so that in itself could be the reason for a lot of the negative things you're experiencing. But also the downward spiral that occurs from that is this huge change or huge imbalance of your hormones from that stress that happens. So they're very much connected, you know, and I've talked about this a lot. It's in all of the webinars that I do and things like that, where we have this cascade of events. And once our adrenals can't keep up and we require this much amount of cortisol, which is our stress hormone, then it means we are kind of bypassing the need to keep our hormones balanced or to kind of make, I guess, those hormones because we're making cortisol instead. That's why stress is so important to our overall hormonal balance. So anyway, that's huge long story as to why I talk about it here on Keto for Women show so much because I care about your hormones and I care about my hormones too. And that's why I now have a huge stress management practice in my everyday life. So the very first thing that is made a huge difference for me and is super important, I think, is to just be aware. So build a sense of awareness around your stress levels. If you don't even know that you're stressed or you don't know what that feels like versus not being stressed, if you don't know what it feels like to be in sympathetic mode, which is our fight or flight response to parasympathetic mode, which is our kind of rest and digest response. If you don't know the difference between those two or you can't feel it, start becoming more aware. And if you are aware already, just start noticing how often you are in one state versus the other state, because I can guarantee you it's going to be a very small amount of time actually in parasympathetic mode. So that's what I did. I just created more awareness. I was definitely someone who was, I've mentioned this before, a go, go, go type person, a type A person, always felt like I had to be doing something. Like I didn't even sit in front of the TV without having the computer in front of me working or something else. Like I gave myself no downtime because I thought that's what you were supposed to do and that you shouldn't have to rest and chill and do nothing. And then once this all came about and I actually got sick, partially because of my poor stress management, that was really an eye opener for me that I needed to start recognizing and doing something different about this. So I just now have built this sense, like I can tell if I start getting into that more sympathetic mentality, if I'm kind of in that spot too long, this usually happens when I'm like 
building a new course or I have something new going on in my business or, you know, there's just something going on. I can usually tell it's going to be one of those times where I'm going to be a little bit more revved up and I've had a little bit harder time relaxing. And that happens. That's normal life, of course. And our bodies are okay with that. They're meant to be able to handle that. But I just like to have that awareness. Now, it may not change a whole lot, but just to know that I can sense it, I think really, really is powerful. So I do that. And then, you know, once I have this awareness or once I guess now that I do and it's kind of built in, I have these tools that I use pretty darn regularly to keep me kind of stable, to keep me in a balanced spot between having this sympathetic state, fight or flight all the time on, which is what I used to be. And, you know, there was a lot of time when I was recovering, when I was trying to get well, that I had to be diligent about being in Paris sympathetic mode for as much of the day as I could because I had to get well. And my hormones were super out of balance. My cortisol was depleted and my adrenals were tanked and I wanted to get out of that. And that's kind of what you need to do when you're at that point. So I I know what it feels like to be in both places. And now that I am well, now I feel like I can kind of oscillate between that or, you know, just stay really balanced. And so in order to do that, you know, I think my normal life gets me into a pretty sympathetic mode. When I'm ready to go into a parasympathetic mode, I take baths, I will read a book. And to be honest, I used to read only like nonfiction, either self-improvement or health or something books, which they're great. I mean, I am a full fan of reading to learn, but that doesn't really help me wind down. So I now, when I need to actually and want to be in parasympathetic mode, I read just like nonfiction, like someone else's story. And that really helps with that. I take naps. I take a lot of naps. That helps me so much to get into the parasympathetic mode, especially if I am kind of in the middle of this weird rush, 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 or just a weird mentality. When I take a nap, it immediately calms me down and I wake up in this new sense. Like I have this new perception when I take a nap and it's, you know, sometimes like 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour. Depends on how tired I am. But I think that that's really great. And of course, I know a lot of you can't do that. You're at work all day. But even on the weekends or when you have a day off, just sleep. See how that feels. It feels really good. I also love to listen to music. So I kind of, because I work from home and am home quite a bit, I pretty much always have music playing. So thank goodness for Spotify. It's really awesome. So I will listen to music if I'm doing some sort of work that is kind of mindless or if I'm cooking or if I'm just kind of chilling, cleaning, whatever, I have music on and that always puts me into a really good parasympathetic mode and just really like fun mentality. And then speaking of cooking, I also find cooking to be very parasympathetic for me. It's very therapeutic, I would say, to chop vegetables and to just like kind of create new recipes and just be in the kitchen and, and experiment and have fun with food. And I definitely was not always that type of person. This is a very new thing, I would say, within the past couple of years, but I find it really enjoyable now. And, you know, I think it's just a change of mentality. I used to see it as something I had to do. And now I see it as something that I get to do. And I make sure that I have time to do it. I'm not feeling rushed or, or anything like that when I do make new recipes or chop a bunch of veggies or whatever the case may be. So those are just a few kind of tools that I have in my toolbox of stress management. But there's so many more. Like I feel like a good... 50% of my life is stress management. And that is, you know, even just going for a hike or taking a walk outside or going to yoga, having coffee with my friends, making dinner with my friends. And we'll talk more about connection too, because that's a really big piece to that. But, you know, there's so many things that, and everybody's different. Every buddy and how they handle stress is different. So this is just to get you to the place where you know that you need to do it. So also what I would kind of recommend, especially if you're someone who's not currently doing either stress relief techniques or self-care is to make them the same thing that will kind of cut down on what you need to do. So when you're doing your stress management and you're using your tools that work for you, have that also be a time of self-care. So obviously taking a bath is extremely 
caring for yourself. It's a really great self-care tool, but it also puts you in this awesome state of parasympathetic mode, just totally relaxed, ready to basically fall asleep state, which is so nice. So you're basically killing two birds with one stone. And even, you know, taking a walk in the woods or something like that can be both and should be both. So I think that's a really good place to start for anyone who's not doing one or the other or both is just to do both at the same time. And, you know, if you're not at a place where you can spend 50% of your life doing self-care and and stress relieving techniques, I don't blame you. But if you can do five to 10 minutes a day, that's a really good place to start. Obviously, meditation is always, you know, right up there. I talked about that last week. And a lot of the mindset stuff we talked about last week too is also stress relief and is also self-care. So they all kind of can go in together. All right, number seven, connections. So as I mentioned just a little bit ago, I think for me, when I was really, really sick, I was not connecting with people because I wasn't really leaving my house all that often. I had a very small group of friends that I would stay in touch with and see, and I had my family, but a lot of my friends, you know, I wasn't able to be social anymore in the way that they wanted me to, or was used to me being because I was so sick and so much had changed for me and I really had to take care of myself. So I couldn't go out drinking and stay up late and all that stuff that I had done in the past. And so I didn't see a lot of those friends anymore. And I just was also not really in the place physically where I felt like I could go do a bunch of stuff. Like a lot of my friends here are very active. So we hike or bike or something like that as our time together. And I couldn't do that because I wasn't feeling well physically. And a lot of times I just didn't have the energy or I didn't feel well mentally. So once I was able to get to a point where I felt good enough to do some of those things, I realized the importance. And really, actually, before that, when I was really at the bottom basement low of my health stuff and not really seeing all my friends that often, I realized how important connections were. And so as soon as I felt like I could do it physically, I made it a point to start reconnecting with all of my friends and I really think that that is such a huge piece that a lot of us might be missing when we talk about maintaining our health or even getting healthy. A lot of us think that we have to do it on our own or without you even knowing that you've gotten into that mentality where you don't talk about it with others or you don't go try to have fun because you just don't feel up for it. You've kind of let some of your connections down or you've let them dwindle because you're not feeling confident enough or not feeling happy enough. You're kind of in this, in this weird state and I've been there, so I totally get it. But I will tell you that continuing your connections, making new connections and really putting some really good, solid quality time and effort into those connections is so important. It is the thing that will keep you humming. It will start raising your vibration if it's at this low point, or it will continue a high vibration if you already are at a higher vibration. But there really is something deep down that goes on in our bodies when we have these connections and when we foster them. So of course, I know a lot of you have families and I just want to make sure that Yes, I I get that there's a lot of day-to-day operations of having a family. I have a sister with four kids and I see it very regularly. But I also think that there still needs to be time that is special, special time planned. Maybe you're one-on-one with a child. You take them on a date or something like that. That's something I do with my nieces and nephews. And I think that's so awesome. And they really enjoy it just as much as I do. So have it's a quality time situation where it's kind of a one-on-one attention and just something new and different and away from the norm. So I think that's really important for your family. And then for your partner, again, I know that that especially if you've been with your partner for a while, there is some sense of like the day-to-day normal operations. But again, make sure that you are still finding time that is of quality, like good, high quality, 
time where you're putting in an effort, both of you are putting in an effort to connect with the other, you're having this really great conversation, or you're doing something you both love to do and laughing a ton, you're getting dressed up and going on a date or going to a play, just do something special for one another all the time, (laughs) as much as you possibly can. Again, I know that there's daily life that needs to be had, but know that having a strong connection with a partner will be a huge, huge piece to you all getting and staying healthy to all of us. For all of us, I think that's important. And if you don't have a partner, then that partner is a friend or a family member. It's just someone that you feel really, really connected to. And it could be your mom. It could be your sister. It could be your nephew. It could be your best friend even a coworker, someone that you feel really super connected to, that you can go out and do special things with, that you can laugh with, you can have good conversations with, you feel comfortable around them, and you can really make some special time and put in some effort with that person. So that is important to do no matter who you are, no matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what stage of your health status you're in, that will help you so much to keep those connections going. Before we move on with this episode, I want to give you all a quick update about one of our sponsors, a great sponsor of the Keto for Women show, Tribali Foods. So as we've mentioned, they have three different flavors of their burger patties. They have a chipotle chicken, a Mediterranean beef, and an umami beef. And now they are coming out with a Thai turkey. Doesn't that sound amazing? I cannot wait to get my hands on this turkey burger. It's going to be so, so great. And then they also released uh, a few months ago their sausage patties. They have a chicken apple sausage and then a pork sage sausage. And I can tell you with full confidence, they are the best pre-made sausages I have ever had in my life. You guys are going to love them. The cool thing about Tribali, which I've talked about before and is why they are a sponsor of the Keto for Women show, because it's something I really connect with and believe in, and that is the quality of the food they are using in these products. So yes, they are frozen meat patties, but they are done with the highest quality and level of care that you can with a food product. So they have really good, high-quality grass-fed beef and pastured chicken and turkey, and I think that is just so important. All of the spices are organic, and that's all that's in it, our meat and spices and then they freeze them, they ship them to you and you get to keep them in your freezer for, like for me, I use them when I come home from traveling or when I'm about to go traveling and I have no food. That is a great time to pull out your burger patties or your sausage patties and heat them up. It takes 10 minutes and you have an amazing, good, high quality meal. They are so convenient. And also more information, they are now in 150 Walmart stores too. So we have them in Target and Natural Grocers and Whole Foods and now in Walmart. So there's a good chance you can find them in your stores. And if not, or if you're just like me and want to online shop, you can Go to tribalifoods.com and use the coupon code KETO, the number four women, for 15% off your order. That's KETO, the number four women, for 15% off at tribalifoods.com. You guys are going to love them. All right, number eight, keeping tabs on on yourself. So this is where we talk about the testing. This is where we get away from some of this kind of woo-woo stuff that I've been talking about. And this is kind of more of the, yeah, you just got to do this testing to really keep tabs on who you are, what you're doing, what your health is doing, and how everything that you're doing is working for you. So as I mentioned The reason why I think I am where I am right now as far as my health status coming from the past five years of it being pretty much a mess, well, there's a few things. I think the first thing is my mentality, which I talked about, like just I continue to stay positive. I continue to know I was going to get better. I did not let myself get too far in the dumps. Now, I'm not saying I was super positive all the time. I'll be totally honest, but I didn't let myself get too far down before I lifted myself back up, before I started doing the work that I needed to do to uplift myself, but I stayed positive. 
The second thing is I kept digging, and that is why I talk about this so much here on the Keto for Women show, about you all taking charge of your health, and that's really my main mission and goal with you all. Whether it's keto or not, I just want you to know that you have full control over your health, and you are fully capable of finding out what's going on and doing what you need to do to see if you can improve your health. So in that case, for me, when I start, and you'll remember from my story, I just kept seeing practitioner after practitioner. I kept doing test after test until I had an answer. And I did not get an answer right away to the degree that I needed. Like I had people that, you know, one practitioner kind of suspect mold and she was the one that brought it up. And that really got me digging further in that regard. But there's a ton of tests you have to do in that to know if that's an issue and you have to test your home. And, you know, there's so much that goes into it, but I wasn't willing to not because I wanted to get well. So yes, it was super expensive. I went into pretty severe debt to get all this testing done, but I didn't care because I would rather have $10,000 worth of debt and be happy and healthy and be able to work enough to pay that off versus continue to feel like crap and not know what's going on and just live in this really terrible life that I was living at that time. So I really made that choice. And that's when I started doing all this testing. So yes, I did all the mold testing. And I talked about that in my story in episode 69. So if you want to go back and listen to basically all you have to do is go see the right doctor and they'll do the right tests for you. But also, like I mentioned, I saw my adrenal panel and my hormone panel around that same time, which is how I knew that I was totally tanked out with my cortisol. I also did a GI panel. So I knew that my gut had some healing to do. I had a food sensitivity panel done. So I knew I had some food sensitivities that I needed to take out. And I did a blood test so I could see the status of just everything, my cardiovascular, my thyroid, my immune system, my inflammatory system, my metabolic system, all of these things. I did all of it. I did as much as I needed to do. I did what my doctor told me I needed to do. And it really, truly helped me get better quicker, I really think, because I didn't waste time wondering what was going on. I just wanted to know as soon as possible. And so that helped. And So I really do think that if you are someone who doesn't feel 100% healthy, and I don't know if there is that person out there, to be honest, if you don't feel totally great, then it's worth it to find out why you don't feel great. And you can do that working with a practitioner. And and this is a good spot for me to mention that while I don't do one-on-one testing anymore, I do have practitioners that do. And I am more than happy to refer them to you. You can go to my website and learn more about them and and kind of apply to work with them and all that stuff. So we'll make sure to link to that in the show notes. But you can also obviously go through the Fat Burning Female Project, as I talked about earlier in this episode, and then do testing with me in a group format for pretty much everything I just said. Or you can find a local practitioner in your area too and go see them. It would be more of a functional medicine or naturopath type practitioner who would do the right kinds of testing. So let's go through a little bit in more detail what these tests would be. So first of all, the adrenal and hormone panel, as I've mentioned a bajillion times, and I still get people who don't test this correctly, you are going to get way, way, way more specific and accurate information by testing your hormones through saliva or urine. So you can do a salivary hormone panel. There's a bunch of them out there. There's a a few urine panels out there too, but just doing a blood test is not going to show you what you want to see. And your doctor is going to tell you you're fine and you're not. I've seen it a million times. So please take that information seriously. That would be the first thing you want to get your cortisol tested at four points at least throughout the day. So at least four cortisol points, which means you're going to be collecting four times either urine or saliva. Both are super easy, by the way. No big deal. And then from there, they'll also test your progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, DHEA, and some of the metabolites perhaps too, depending on what test you get. So that's really important. I think 
really there there's not one woman in this world that I don't think should know the status of their hormones to be totally honest it will like just make so much more sense about everything and really put a lot of things together for you if you ever have any weird or wonky symptoms related to your cycle so that's the first thing the second one would be a GI panel this is obviously more so for the person who well I would say the obvious case would be the person who does have GI issues, who kind of has noticed some bloating or gas going on, maybe some constipation or diarrhea, or just their stools aren't normal. But also if there's any skin sort of condition going on, like eczema or psoriasis, or even just a rash or bumps or anything like that, if you notice any nutrient deficiencies that you might be experiencing, even something like headaches or like fatigue, things like that can be associated with your gut health too. So, I mean, I don't know if every single person on the planet needs to have their GI panel done, but I think a lot of us do, especially a lot of us listening here as Keto for Womeners who are are really concerned about their health and really want to do the best for their bodies. I think it's really good information to get. That is a stool collection. There are a few different ones that you can do. They all basically test for the same thing. Some of them are a little bit more thorough than others. It just depends on who you're going to be working with and what they prefer to do. The practitioners that I work with do the GI map, which is very, very thorough, and it's a DNA analysis, actually, of your stool. So you only have to collect once. It's terrible to collect. I'm not going to lie. Like, nobody wants to play with their poop, so it's not fun, but it's worth it. Trust me, and you would only have to do that one day, and it's not so bad, and you learn so much about yourself, specifically your balance in your microbiome, so the good bacteria versus any pathogenic or negative bacteria that you have going on in there, any sort of other overgrowths, how you're digesting food. It's just, yeah, there's so much that you can learn. It's, it's really cool. And then if you're doing that, then you can, in addition, do the MRT food sensitivity panel. That's the one that I would recommend. And that will show you foods that you're sensitive to. And you can take those out while you're, he- you're healing the gut, which is awesome. And then The blood test would be, I get this question a lot, and it's hard because people want to know what they should get tested when they go to their doctor. And my answer is every single thing that they are willing to do because our medical system doesn't usually get the as thorough of testing done as a more functional medicine practitioner would. And if you go to a functional medicine practitioner, they're going to know exactly what to run and and they're going to make sure that everything's covered. If you're going to your regular doctor, you just want to get as much as you possibly can, as much as your insurance will cover or they're willing to do. And that's kind of where the sticky point happens. But of course, we always want to test our, you know, metabolic panel. You want to look at your cardiovascular markers, your thyroid markers, inflammatory markers, immune system markers, all that stuff. So most of the stuff, I would say about 70% will be done. I'd say the other 30% is iffy. But the big ones that are, are usually pretty iffy that would be really good to check would be to make sure you get the full thyroid panel. And that includes TSH, total T4 and free T4, total T3 and free T3, which are your thyroid hormones. And then also testing for antibodies. So there's two different antibodies. There's TPO and thyroglobulin. Testing for both of those antibodies too would be great, especially if you've never had them tested before. If you had them done before and they were negative then and you haven't had any thyroid issues or any changes, then you may not need to. But if it's the first time, definitely want to get those tested. So the antibodies aren't always covered or done in a traditional medicine setting. And the T3, especially the The T3, just for some reason, is never tested. And it's so important. That's your active thyroid hormone. So it's really important to see that number. And it is often not tested. You'd also want to see if you can take a peek at your fasting insulin, which is also not very commonly tested, especially in a traditional medicine setting. You know, you can learn so much more about your blood sugar from your fasting insulin than from your fasting blood sugar. So I really like to see that being done in more cases. Obviously, you're going to get your cholesterol numbers checked. You would get the rest of your blood sugar markers checked, you know, your glucose, your HbA1c, and that kind of thing. Make sure vitamin D is looked at always. That's always great. 
And I think that should cover it. I will put a full list of what I test for myself in the show notes. So make sure you go ahead and look at that. And speaking of, I know I say go check the show notes a lot. And I just want to let you know that I really do have a lot of information in the show notes. It's basically like a blog post about the episode with tons of information, literally everything I say in a bullet point format. So if you ever miss anything or you just want to go back and kind of see what was said in one particular episode, Episode, check the show notes. They're really, really good. They're all on my website for every single episode. So I really do have a lot of good stuff over there. I promise. I'm not just saying check the show notes. They're really there. So I will post all that. But I, w- I just want to say that yes, you are getting all this tested as you're noticing things changing, perhaps, or you do want to take charge of your health and get that going again. But you're also maintaining it too. So if this is something that you've done in the past and you've worked on and maybe you're starting to feel better, but maybe not everything's going great or you still have some more things to work on, it's maintenance. It's health maintenance to get this stuff tested, I would say once a year. If everything's going well, if things aren't going well, maybe a little bit more often than that, but definitely once a year to get all of this tested and just stay on top of your health and what your body is doing. It opens up so many doors of knowledge when every year you know what's going on and you can kind of determine, oh, well, this year was a little bit more stressful, so it makes sense that my adrenals are struggling a little bit. Like You just have so much more knowledge about your body. It's just so good and it's just great information to have. Number nine, you are potentially also getting outside help. So of course, like I mentioned, this may mean seeing a practitioner in your area or working with one of my referrals or working with me in the Fat Burning Female Project. Of course, having a nutritionist and a functional medicine doctor on your side are just so incredible, but also other stuff too, like other things that you enjoy that make you feel balanced and centered and healthy. For me... I've done massage. I've worked kind of with a masseuse, several different masseuses, actually. I think that's a word to kind of work on some of my physical ailments that have happened over the course of just lifting a lot of weight in the past few years, but also just kind of as stress relief, of course, and just overall physical balance and maintenance. So I think that's really great. And doing that on a regular basis is awesome if that's something that really speaks to you. Now I do acupuncture, which I've mentioned and man, do I love that. It's it's just awesome. I went there originally about a year ago. I was having problems with my sleep and she was able to help me with that. And now we go is just kind of stress maintenance. It's kind of part of my self-care stress management routine now. But if there's anything like acutely going on, we'll work on that. The other week I had some digestive stuff going on. So we worked on that. And then if it's around my menstrual cycle, we'll kind of do stuff to have a good, healthy menstrual cycle, things like that. And man, it's just so nice. And it's something where, you know, I have to be honest, I don't really understand what's going on with all those needles and where she's putting them. But I know that it works because I feel it. I feel different when I leave that office. And I do think it's something that kind of builds on each other. So when I started going, I was going once a week and really felt that building. And now that I'm in maintenance mode, I go once every two or three weeks. I just can tell that it's keeping me in this really balanced, healthy place in a whole different way than anything I've ever experienced. And then, of course, I mentioned doing yoga. So yoga, I do not as a workout, but as more of a self-care practice and just a balancer of all things good. So I really, especially when I do more of like a yin yoga style practice, which is restorative yoga, it's more of a slow, like practically like taking a nap, except you're in a a stretch that's pretty painful. So you can't take a nap. (laughs) And if you have done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that I have found is a really great practice to get involved in and to stay on top of similar to the acupuncture where they kind of build on each other. And the more you go, the more you experience these benefits. And so I think that is a great thing to start including for some people, but it could be physical therapy. If you have something like a physical ailment going on. It could be chiropractic if you have something that you're working on with that. There's a lot of different practitioners out there in the world that want to help you and that know 
more about your health than you do, to be totally honest, at least more about what you can do to improve your health. They can give you new suggestions, new ideas, and you just want to build a team because everything does go together. What your nutritionist says is going to be very similar to what your acupuncture says And then it's going to be really similar to what your chiropractor says. And no, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to have this huge team of people on your back. Not at all. But I do think having a few people that you can trust and depend on, and even if you're going to talk to them once every few months, just as someone that's part of your team. So if something does go wrong, you do have someone that knows your body, knows what you've been working on, and you can trust. So you just want to build a team. You want to get some outside help. You don't want to do this all alone. I don't know anybody that has had a whole lot of success doing everything, all of it on their own. You just need some professionals. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very, very helpful. And then lastly, number 10, I do everything I can do every single day to be happy. And so I think, you know, hearing this, it's like, well, of course, like we all want to be happy. We all want to just do what we can to be happy. Like that's either super easy or that's super hard. I think, I think we have two different camps, I would say in that. But I think for me, this is something that has been the biggest change and the biggest shift in my health has come from this. It's the mental state of always being happy and always searching and seeking for that happiness. So if there's something I'm doing that is causing me to be in a bad mood or in a bad place or grumpy or feeling down or anything, then I evaluate that. It's very similar to what I do with my stress and being just kind of mindful and aware of when I'm stressed. I'm also mindful and aware all the time of my mood. And I mean, I'm not going to say I'm never in a bad mood because like that's not possible, I think probably, but I'm very rarely in a bad mood. And you may have noticed that if you watch my Instagram stories or whatever, like I'm pretty much happy all the time because I consciously make that decision. It's not because I have this crazy, amazing life and everything's just going right all the time and I never have anything that's stressful or negative or anything like that. It's not that. It's just that I make sure that I am happy as much of the time as I possibly can. So if I'm not, I do what I need to do to get myself there. If that means that I like go shopping, not even to buy anything, but just because I kind of like shopping. I like seeing what's out there. I like trying things on. I like just kind of browsing and seeing if I think anything's cute. Very rarely do I actually even buy anything, to be honest. I'm more of an online shopper, but when I actually need to buy something. But if I just feel like doing that instead of going to the grocery store, because I know the grocery store is going to kind of put me in a bad mood, then I'll go shop somewhere first. And then I go to the grocery store when I'm already in a good mood and I'm able to stay there. I also time you know, my trips to the grocery store, errands or anything I'm doing because I am someone that hates crowds and crowds will put me in a bad mood. It's probably one of the biggest things that puts me in a bad mood is crowded people and crowded streets. I'm also not a traffic person. So I time my things that I need to do based on that, because I know that that would put me in a bad mood and I'm not willing to go there. So I'm able to do all of my errands and shopping and traveling when I know it's not going to be that way. And it doesn't always happen, but I try. And I know you guys are all like, oh yeah, well, that's because you make your own schedule and blah, blah, blah. I know, I get it. I know a lot of you have to go do things on weekends and stuff like that, but maybe there is something that is currently bugging you or keeping you from being happy more often that you can change. This is just an example for me, but maybe there is something that isn't that, but is similar or gives you a similar change of pace when you can change that. Maybe you'd rather read a book than watch TV and you don't do that because you're supposed to be watching TV with your husband, but you'd rather read a book and that would make you happier. It's doing those kinds of things And just being a little bit more aware of what would make you the happiest in that moment. So that's one thing. It's the actual physical things that you're doing that you could just change slightly and it would make you a little bit happier. But it's also how you perceive things too. So yes, I don't like traffic, but sometimes I'm in traffic. And I have to tell you that... I used to have road rage. I just like, I would get so angry. I would get so upset. I would get like hot and anxious and just, I would be so mad when I was stuck in traffic. And now if I am, because I refuse to get into that 
place with my mental state, I refuse to go there. So now if I am, I just crank the music. I find my most favorite playlist. I crank the music or I'll listen to a a really funny podcast. I love comedian podcasts and then I'm all good. And I just know that like, all right, I might be late somewhere. Oh, well. And I still try to enjoy myself. So I think that is another really big piece is like, yeah, we're all going to have things that we don't like to do or puts us in a bad mood, but you can, and you have full control, just like you do with your health. You have full control of your mental state too. You can choose to be happier in that moment. And it's always just starting with awareness. So all you have to do right now and all I did to start is I just became more aware of the amount of time I was spending being less than happy. And I changed that. And any time I saw myself being less than happy or getting to that point, I would flip it. I would change how I was thinking about it. I would do what I needed to do to get into a happier place. And I would just go with it and roll with it. And that has helped me so incredibly much. And it's something that I see, and this is why I kind of want to wanted to end with this as being number 10, because I talked about this in the past few episodes, something I'm so passionate about, the mindset piece of the health journey that we are all on, because it's something that I changed so much for myself, but it's something that I see that nobody else is changing and they're not getting better because of it. If you're sick and you are just grumpy and moany and whiny about being sick, you're going to stay sick for a lot longer. Whereas if you're sick And you do what you need to do. You know you're going to get better. You tell yourself you're going to get better. You act to the degree that you can, that you're better. You're going to get better a lot quicker. If you are gaining weight and you tell yourself that you're frustrated, you hate your body, you don't know why this is happening, you can't stand yourself, everything is ugly. If you're in this pattern, you're not going to lose weight. I will tell you that 100%. You are not going to lose weight. However, if you can change that mentality, and this is what I've talked about this at some point, I forgot. I think I talked about this here. Man, it all runs together sometimes. But I've talked about this when you can change that mentality and you know look in the mirror and find something that you really love about yourself and celebrate that. And you can just let yourself know and remind yourself that you're working on some bigger things right now. And those things are going to get into balance. And then your weight's going to get into balance. And you're just living your life regardless, and you're still staying positive and happy and healthy. That is what will change your weight. I promise. I've seen it. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in others. I promise you that is a thing. So that's why I wanted to end with it, because I do think that it's something that, yes, we can go through all of the other things that I talked about today and in the last episode. But if you haven't looked at your mindset yet and you haven't just tried to be a little bit more positive in a little bit more of your day, it's not going to happen nearly as fast as if you make the conscious choice and effort to be as happy as you can as much of the day as you can. And I know it seems like it should be easy. We, we should want to be happy, right? We should want to spend the majority of our day just, you know, skipping along and humming and singing and everything. And no, I don't do that all day, I promise. But it's hard. It takes effort. And I will tell you that firsthand. It takes effort to really make that happen, and to make that switch and make that a priority. It's much easier for us to be grumpy and negative. It just is. It's the world we live in. It's much harder to be happy and positive. But I want you to make that choice and I want you to make that effort and I want you to see how things change for you then. All right, we'll stop with that. I finally got through all 10. I'm sorry that took so long. Can you guys believe that three episodes ago, I thought it was going to take one episode. I was very sadly mistaken, but that's okay. We finally got it all out and I'm loving the the response I'm getting from doing these episodes. Thank you all so much for being open to me sharing my story and what I do and what I see work for myself, which I think could also work for you. I hope that you can take even some of this and put it into practice in your own lives and really see some changes really, really quickly. I promise next week we are going back to keto hot seat. 
We're going to take all those questions that I got a few weeks ago and get through as many of them as we can. So be ready for that. If you asked a question, yours may just be answered next week. So I will see you all then. And until then, take care and have a great week. 